Welcome back to Razm Afsar TV. Today, I'm having a very good friend of mine, Behrang and Behrang Fahimi. And uh, welcome to Razm Afsar TV, Behrang. Thank you so much. And I'm glad to have your audience with me and you. And I kind of I'm excited to uh, see all of you without seeing you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, okay, we are going to start and talk about first, could you please, I mean, because your opinion counts a lot because you are a metal expert and an engineer, but before we go, please introduce yourself, please, Behrang John. Well, uh, I'm Behrang, born in Tehran, living in Texas, United States, and been in metallurgy life almost 23 years till now, 24 years actually. So I kind of be could be retired you know, in the next five years legally. And uh, of course I have other hobbies uh, like history, geography, gardening, anything that relates to humanity, humanity science, I really love it. I found uh, a very reputed, you know, deeply acknowledgeable uh, group of people that are led by Mr. Manu Chir. And he got my attention and I started to read his books. And I'm very glad to have him, you know, face to face now and we can, we can talk about mutual interest that we have all together. Um, uh, especially when we understand that most of the history of the arm and armors and whatever around us even is related to materials, exclusively metals, ceramics, maybe now polymers, you guys are getting used to it. I'm still the old school guy, I love metals. So, but, this is the edge of a science that almost motivated uh, transformations of civilizations, metals. So I'm very glad that I know a little bit of it. Uh, Baron, could you please tell us about your academic background? Because you're an engineer. Could you just tell us what you have done in that field? Well, uh, sure. So, and, and, you know, I was led by my father. He was reading a book, The Third Wave, Elvin Toffler. And he passed away a while ago. Uh, and he was mentioning that the next generation, the only science that in next decade, you know, in the next century doesn't change in the, in way, in the way that, you know, it impacts the civilization is material science. So since I, I was listening to him a lot, said, okay, I'm gonna select one of my interests because I was really loving in chemical engineering anyway. I selected to start metallurgical material science. And I understood what Elvin Toffler said because we still impacting the whole world, you know, from nanomaterials, electronics, all of them are, are dependent on our old friends that they were developing forging. So it starts from there. Semiconductors starts from there. Anything that you see in this new world starts from our ancestors, old friends that started to mess with and have experiments with metals, materials and everything around them. So I selected that and graduated in metallurgy and I continued my master's in corrosion engineering and entered the oil and gas world. So I started to focus on welding, we call it. And uh, although I had, I had other backgrounds, but welding now in the United States uh, I'm focusing on corrosion of welds. How do they perform when you weld two metals together? How do they perform in 
case that the whole component is exposed to a corrosive environment. It can be atmospheric, it can be, you know, very sour service we call, it can be, all, you know, seawater, anything you name it. So that's my focus currently. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, corrosion engineering, is it also underwater like what we see sometimes some people who are welding underwater and is it also that? It can be. Can be. Yes, of course, you know, and uh, corrosion is actually, you know, is, is, is you know, it, it looks like when I, if I divide uh, metallurgy in many sections, the beginning sections, the baby, baby era is extractive metallurgy, how to extract metals from ores and colorized oxides and things. And the end of life of it is exactly the vice versa. The metal goes back to colloride and oxides again. So <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to do is what I call myself is like, you know, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm what I call, you know, doctor for elderly people, you know, in metal, <laughs> metal things, you know. So I try to, first of all, join them together and then say, okay, your joint needs protection. So that's how it means in normal life, in the usual life that we have. But actually, I'm combining the science of, in metallurgy science, science of uh, joining metals with protecting metals. So it's kind of really, if I want to translate to human body, is science of protecting your elbow, your, your nuggets here, your you know, knees and your neck. So highly stressed areas that yeah. are joints. That's right. Okay. So it's like that you coat them? I mean, for lay people like, you some know. Days, yes. Some days we coat them. Some days we, we weld it with the good, good material that is in like, you know, you know, has a good passivation factor or naturally is immune to corrosion in that environment. We have no metals, even no ceramics that are immune from degradation or corrosion. We have no material, depends on environment, temperature, conditions and everything. Yeah. So our, our job is to figure out which metal is good for what environment. Environment includes temperature, chemical composition, and even time. Yeah. So it's 4D uh, dimension. Wow, interesting. What about gold? But gold doesn't oh. oxidize, right? It oxidizes. Okay. <laughs> Depends on where, you know, and you know, that, that's the way that we extract gold from, you know, diluted mines. Okay. So if we go back, you know, we have a special assets that um, dissolves gold, and you know, we yes. just, you know, yes, uh, electro deposited somewhere. So even That's gold right. can be corroded. So I always challenge people, even with gold, because gold has impressions yes. on many people. Usually, I mess up with my electronic engineer friends. I say, "All right, fellows." You answer this question. What is the most conductive metal in the whole world? 90% of the time I got, I get this answer. And I got this answer. Gold. Okay. Well, in fact, that's not true. Uh, if you look at it instantly, that's not true. If you look at it in a timely manner, maybe. The very best conductive element in the whole world is silver. And then is copper with no oxygen in it. So that's a condition. Right? <laughs> then gold. So this is the third place. So why we why it is famous that way? Well. It, uh, compared to even silver, which is a noble metal, 
it has less corrosion, less corrosion issues with environments that we have electronic devices like atmospheric. So since we are talking about thin layers of silver or gold or copper, comparatively in the time, gold doesn't corrode that much in that thin layer that it is deposited in the electronics. So it, it remains good. <laughs> but when you have copper, half of that is oxidized. So you have heated up circuit and it burns out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the difference. That's why we select gold over to them. What is the time frame? So that's why time is a matter in corrosion. It is a time dependent phenomenon. Corrosion is time dependent phenomenon. So that's how it's about gold. But if I want to say, do you, you have, have you seen a more noble metal than gold? Say yes, platinum, right? You no, know, it usually performs better than gold. And then, but gold has a magic in our minds. It's money, right? <laughs> but you won't believe that we have more expensive metals in world than gold. If somebody wants to invest on them, just call me out. <laughs> so uh, I can tell you one, rare metal elements, a group of rare metal elements, you always, you never lose if you invest on in them. So that's my two cents type of advice. Could you please tell us which rare met metals you're- All, all, oh. all, all of them has it, their rare application so they people can just think can can think about it. So no, that that is my advice. And uh, I have more advices. And uh, but you know it's it's, it's for t you know the time to you know for new era. And uh, Metals are metals. They stay metals and nobody can replace them. Yeah, of course. But if somebody else wants to ask another question, I say steel. Steel is the best metal ever happened for human life. Could you tell us why? Okay. So humankind has been excited for discovering new materials. But Statistically, none of them is steel can replace the steel. If you want to have a high rise, the only available and reliable material for you is a steel. Yeah. If you want to have a boat or a sheep, that is a steel is steel, steel is steel, right? So, but the other hand, Material science is losing its history and mastering ability on extractive methodology, yeah. which is critical for humankind. This is the art that is being critical through the history. Anything that we made started from extractive methodology, how we extract metals from ores how we purify them in a way that we want. So let's, if I say that 90% of new world students on material science doesn't care about extractive methodology anymore, I uh, don't exaggerate. But why? Well, that's the market and, and TV shows nanomaterials and this and that and polymers and composites and this and that right fine they all have their own place in our modern world it doesn't mean that you know if you have an old grandma you need to abandon her from your house maybe she knows much better than you on many things so it is it is happening then maybe we lose that science 
or translate that from what we call it, first world countries to second world countries. So, I mean, I don't that much believe on categorization that much anymore. But this is the reality. Yeah. Example of Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh, that was the center of the steel for a long time, Carnegie Mellon. And uh, they no longer are good. They don't want to invest in new technologies. They, they're a little bit behind. They're suffering. They're not leading anything anymore. Yes, that is happening. But if I'm a smart person, I say that if I know about a steel, I can still earn money in near future because it will be depleted from knowledgeable people. So if you still you know stay on the screen, you can win some. So still, as you know, it's a very fascinating subject. We know that in, uh, we all know that, for example, in Persian manuscripts and manuals, they always talk about Pura de Gohardar, which yes, is, sir. if you want to call it like jeweled steel, as we call it in English, not crucible steel, but it's actually in English is like jeweled steel. Yes. Which is, steel is, what I think that you are fascinated by this steel. Could you just Correctly. tell us? Started from your, your, your texts. Right here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that was one of my best thing that I ever had. And uh, that's actually a gift to my metallurgy friends that I usually do every year. Best winner of the metallurgy friend you know, will, will have this. Uh, yes, that is. Actually, the meaning of that you started from crucible steel and then, you know, jeweler, jewel steel, you know, go hard or. Well, uh, that's a true statement. Uh, I think that it is faint. This, this type of steel is famous because of its performance. Yes. And the, the, big, the most important performance part of it is impact resistant. Well, you have a sword, shamshir. You hit, it can hit a bone, skull, an armor. Uh, what was it? Shield. Shield. Anything else. I mean, stone, somewhere else, you know. Uh, what? I mean, we've seen that, you know, sharp edges are very critical, but it's not, crit not critical on hitting and killing some, some subjects and objects as much as the impact, because you need to just do that impact to the other side, not the sword. The so sword is an example because we have other, other you know, other, you know, uh, arms as well. Um, so that impact property comes from, originally comes from chemistry and the purity. Literally, if I want to simplify it, and my many, many factors, you know, my methodology, you know, friends will come back and say, oh, you forgot this, you forgot that, you know, green requirement, this and that. So I understand that, okay. But, you know, but generally it's about, you know, how, what, how much level of the impurity you have in your steel, right? And what is the basic chemistry of what you're doing? Yes. So yeah, I mean, forging, you know, fining, refining, grain refining, and every, you name it. You know, you can name many things. So to to go through this knowledge, I think that is more than a knowledge. Is kind of up, you know. I, I see it this way. 